Kate, let me go back to your first conversations with Todd. Had he sent you a script? Had he described what he was working on? Where did your contact with Todd begin and what was his pitch to you? Well, we'd met 10 years ago. Um, to, he'd been writing a script with Joan Didion and um, I, yeah, and so I'd, we talked about working together and that for one reason or another that hadn't happened. And obviously it's been a long time since Todd has made a film and I'm so grateful he's he's back <laughs> in, in the race again. I mean, you know, on the track. And um, he sent me the script and there was no contact at all. And it, I think it's it speaks to him wanting to get an actor's response to things. He didn't want to send a cover letter. He didn't want to tell me anything about it. And um, and so the conversation, when we began to speak about it, uh, it was intensely practical because there was so much to do. It wasn't until we actually got on set and started to to um, to deconstruct the scenes that we got to the sort of the metaphysical layers or in rehearsal we, we did all of the sort of the backstory stuff. And I think that comes from him being an actor is he wants, he doesn't, um, I, you know, I, I then gradually, of course, had so many questions uh, for him during the process of the, of the preparation, but he tended to the practical. Did he answer those questions or does he like actors to have some doubt about certain things? If you want to know everything, does he hold something back? Or do you want to know everything he can tell you? If there's a knot, I mean, but it's also, I think it's the process of filming, isn't it? Is that you don't necessarily want to have everything tied down and answered. And this, this film, I think as an experience, I hope, asks more questions than it answers. And that was, that was part of the process. It's a, it's a rehearsal movie. And I mean, art imitated life in that way. The, the, the process of making it was just so in, invigorating and, and uh, challenging, not only physically, but sort of um, emotionally and, and um, metaphysically, I think, yeah. Nina, how would you describe, or how did you talk to Todd about your character's relationship, Sharon, with Lydia? Because it is almost as much a relationship as it is maybe a transaction, that there's something going on that's understood maybe more by your character than Lydia. How would you describe what your, what your conversations with Todd were about the nature of the relationship? We see it, but what were your questions about how they get along and why they're still together? Yeah, at the beginning, for example, uh, when I read the script the first time, there was nothing in the script about any transactional <laughs> stuff, you know, between between the two. And the more I I read the script and I thought about Sharon, and I then started we started to rehearse, and I, I spoke with with Todd about the scenes. I kind of felt Sharon is not a victim, you know. She is as much in this as Lydia. And maybe what makes Lydia so controversial, let's say, is something that Sharon really loves and really likes. And maybe she enhances it in places. And I, so I could find in the script little points that actually hinted me in this, di put me in this direction, like when she says in the first scene, our daughter is really, uh, you know, having trouble and, and she comes back with bruised chins and so someone's doing something to her. You can say that very innocently, but if you know whom you're talking to, you know mm -hmm. she's going to do something about right. it, you know. So, <laughs> you and then she does something uh, that I didn't see. I had no idea, you know. Right. Uh, and but something, and, and she comes home and she's fine. You know, oops, <laughs> you know. So it, it 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 told me, oh, she is part in this, and and how much are people who are around people in a powerful position? How much? Do they want to keep right. this system up? You know, and how much Whether can, they, being how much in can they benefit from that power? Exactly. Do they benefit? But but they can hide. She can't hide. You know. Right. So that I found so immensely interesting. Once we got that out of it, um, we 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 tried to uh, figure that out more and more. But the base for me was truly that they are a couple in love and that they've been through a lot, but also where they find each other is really in the art of making music together, you know. If people had watched the credits closely, you would have seen Cello Solo by Sophie Cower. Sophie, how many movies have you made before this? 
Zero. First film. How many times have you played the cello before this? Oh, since I was eight years old. So a bit of a... So tell us where you, where you are professionally. You're still studying, is that right? Yeah, I'm halfway through my bachelor's degree. Um, so right after this, I'll be going back to school. <laughs> um, but uh, no, it's uh, really surreal. I mean, I still haven't quite understood <laughs> what has happened. And every time I see the film, I'm just like, is that really, did I really do this? What on earth? <laughs> and I get to work with these amazing people, like really everyone, the best of the best, top of their game, both as in, both in terms of all the the cast and the crew and then the actual musicians. And yeah, there is an incredible team involved and, you know, Todd as well. Um, and uh, I don't quite know when I'll kind of wake up, really. Um, maybe I won't. Maybe that's a good thing. I don't know. <laughs> Marco, you are setting... A, a lot of this movie is set in a performance space in a hall. How do you go about finding a hall that you could shoot in and that worked for the vaguely fictional orchestra that your character is conducting? Well, that was kind of the first conversation we had when... A little closer. When, uh, that was one of the first conversations we had when we were talking about the movie, is where... Like, how do we pull off the concert hall that had to do... Like, Kate mentioned it's a rehearsal movie, so we spend a lot of time in in the concert hall itself, in the main uh, performing hall. But we also had all the other um, parts of the concert hall, like the hallways, the backstage, the offices, and all that stuff to, to service. Um, we looked at all the possible concert halls in Germany and... Um, found one in Dresden that would kindly cooperate with us and we shot in there for nine days so we had to have quite a big slot that was only possible to, to achieve that because it was still COVID and they closed down and um, funny enough through um, because we learn in or we see in the movie that um, the orchestras it, they are kind of a democratic body they have to decide on what piece to play. And and so we had to go on sessions before to um, present the project to the orchestra and um, ask them whether they whether they all, like all the musicians, are prepared to take part in the movie. And, and whether or not they wanted to play the piece of music. Exactly. Wow. Yeah. It's like bench rights. They get, they get to decide. Yeah, they also, like, r really right. it was about do they want to play Mahler 5? That was the first conversation we had with him. Bina, I want to ask you your creative process. When you're reading a script, I assume that's where you start, and how story speaks to you first and then character. And at what point do you start having ideas about design? And at what point does the actor become part of that design process? Well, I think at um, in contemporary costume design, for me, the actors are fundamental. Um, I base my ideas on the actors. I love to work with them, I love to listen to them. Of course, first I listen to the script, I read it, and we had a very specific script, and we had a very specific director. And I was lucky because I connected very quickly with him. And I was also very lucky because I no Kate, so that also helps. And I had worked already once with Nina, and I know her from her German, like we are both German. And, um, for me in this movie, it is not about only the costume design that I try to help them and to dress them. I really try to be like a companion in what they want to achieve. and And it's, for example, I thought there's a lot of, in the movie, about tempo. The musician, the tempo, how Kate walked, mm -hmm. how Nina, Nina walks, and how Todd is. And actually, I thought, like, for me, because a lot of costumes I just decided in the morning. Um, and so in the m when I came to set, I first I had, like, to get the tempo of Todd that is very special, to find out... So how is the scene today? Look at his design, the interior. Is there everything like interesting that I can capture and then transmit it to the actors? Meanwhile, they are getting dressed. And so 
I go perhaps first to address Nina and she has her own tempo and I have like to adapt to her so that I can support her and then I get to Kate and she has another tempo again and for example the person who dressed Kate she said to me that when you are together with Kate it looks like you are dancing around the the rag. <laughs> I never know what you are go both going to do and what where you end up because I always had more options <laughs> because this was so important in the movie. It's such a personal story and it's also like the story was growing with us. How much power really did she have? There were so many questions and we didn't know the answers and perhaps we never, we didn't want to know the answers. We just wanted to experience it. Um, Monica, I want to ask you about editing. It almost feels like there's so much musical language in the dialogue with this film. Does Todd also speak in a musical language when he's editing in terms of movements, in terms of tempo, in terms of crescendos? Or do you have a language that's not at all related to music? It, it, is, a, it is a mutual understanding of what the material gives us and how we can build it uh, I mean, we don't pronounce the words, but we feel them while building up the story and while building up the scenes. Tell us about a scene that was, I won't say troublesome, but difficult to solve. The scene that you maybe kept coming back to, throwing different assemblies together to find out how it worked or how it worked best. To be honest, the most difficult and demanding scene is a scene that didn't make it to oh. in the film. <laughs> but this is very often the case. It's a, it's a Maybe very that's why it didn't make it? It was, you couldn't solve it? No, we could solve it. It would be a, a, a nice piece of a very short, short film. Um, but it didn't have the space in the film because it was too distracting from where Lydia was at the very moment in time. Monica? Bina, Marco, Sophie, Nina, Kate, thank, thank you so you much, much for joining us. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you.